Hi, good evening all. Um, this is the meeting of the Architecture, Architecture and Historic Review Board of September 26. The next meeting will be held on October 24th, and uh, the all applications must be in by October 13th. So on the agenda we have uh, 71 Mohican Park Avenue. It's a second floor addition. We have no materials, right? No new plans. No new plans. So nobody here. Anybody on 71 Mohican? So, should we continue for another one? Your choice. Thank you all. Nobody get any new plans? Or? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'll make a motion that we take them off the agenda until they submit new plans. Second. Brandon seconds. Okay. Next one on the agenda is 43 Belden Avenue. Um, I like the fact that obviously you have, you know, given a break between the new and the old so that the old portion stays symmetric or true to its original. Um, 
I also noticed that I guess it's an existing nonconformity with the SAP on the left hand side. That's right. Um, but that, the right hand side, were you adding on? You know, what I didn't do is analyze whether it needs the seven foot disruption that's actually allowed. It may, but in any event, it's. It's an existing. It's history. It's in historic. And I guess that's. It doesn't apply. To the the doesn't apply. That, that conforms, except for, I noticed. And your uh, elevations, your height is 27, 11 and 3 quarters. What, what grade are you measuring from there? Because in your zoning chart, you're 6 inches over, you're 28 to 6. Okay. So just, just for, um, for discussion, just for to have a conversation. Right. I totally get what you guys are doing, which is good, it's respectful, all and, uh, the application is very complete, I acknowledge. Just to open a conversation to if the difference on the reach height with the new addition and the old ones is substantial enough to make it a separate second comment is, I prob you probably s looked at it, is what will happen if we continue the reach? Yeah. Yeah. And because the, what's, what I see is, sorry, what I see, thank you for the model, I really yeah. enjoy this. Uh, uh, you know, the, the center, the axis of the, hu the house is so dominant that it won't be affected. Right. At this point of the game, the cube or the square shape of the mass of of the make won't lose the character. Right. And building wise simplifies it and this being so minimal, I don't know if it's disturbing more than healthy to separate, unless it's really more substantial separation. But that's my I, I'm not sure of what's the best alternative. You probably seen it more than I did and study it and I respect your your take. But as, a, as an opening discussion is my instinct would say that go straight, accept what it is. Um, well, look, I think there, there would be a lot of ways to approach it. Actually, I think uh, it might be simpler from the construction point of view, but I'll tell you there are a couple of things. I found that um, the minimum of over the years, I've done a lot of little hyphen things where you know, there's a main uh, element, a hyphen, have a hyphen, then that subsidiary can be much more different and free in design than something that's actually a sister or like a twin. The other thing is that four inches, uh, I've found, registers as a shadow line. So four inches, uh, the, the vertical dimension difference there has to be more than four inches because in order to flash up, you need, you need to have, um, you know, six to eight inches minimum to, to mechanically make it. But the problem is actually, there are problems, and I've had experiences, <clears throat> because no building has been around for 150 years. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I'm starting to get asymmetrical. But these buildings are, you know, uh, uh, that have been around longer, really get, start to move around, and planes of the roof start to distort. So when you're trying to match with new construction, it becomes really a challenge, so that having little offsets may look nervous, but I think it actually accomplishes the, the subordinate 
massive. Uh, it's significant enough to, to do that. Uh, if you have a real problem, uh, for example, siding coming to uh, coming to an end and then continuing the plane of siding or the roofing mechanically is more challenging. So there's several reasons. There's the constructability uh, to minimize that that continuity, and then there's uh, and I you know we will face that challenge. take on, there are a bunch of options, your option is certainly one, a reasonable one. You know. And the second thing, I mean, just to add to the conversation, uh, is if in fact it's, it's, this is a decided step down, how is that in the back you don't emphasize, because this is a square too. Right. So in, in this case, this overlaps, kills a little bit of the proportions in the right. front, which is fine, but in the back is a continuous surface, which without the break. Uh, yeah. That's, well, um, that's a, the, the, the argument is, is yeah. building on the same argument. If you, you know, those new houses on Broadway show the problems of both planar uh, detail and where he's trying, to, where he's trying to differentiate and you know, make a gable look like a gable, even though it's still planar. And so, um, Mechanically, it would be possible to, to bring down a you know a corner detail on it. It's admittedly um, it would be a little better to have an offset, but it's just because of the footprint of it. Mr. Sieverding, the previous architect, if I was in the footprint now, I would have a different footprint. Um, I mean, it would be a different addition um, completely. Mm -hmm. But we were we were sort of locked into the fact that that footprint is. Gives us this, this. We have to deal with the co planar situation in the back. Line. I take your point. I mean, it, to be more thoroughgoing with that theory, you do it in the back, but at least it's in the back. And so, um, in, in you know, kind of when we deal with historic properties, it's like uh, what happens in Las Vegas, you know, is based in Las Vegas. So what happens in the back, a lot of things come and go, like tents and dorm, you know, like little additions. And it's sort of okay if somebody does something new in the back, but even a, you know, like Mount Vernon, uh, slave quarters and other things. You know, but in any event, uh, you know, I, I, I agree that that's, you know, not as inconsistent. Um, actually, the model doesn't do justice to your front elevation. It looks like there is a little more space between the roofs on the elevation, assuming yeah. that the elevation is probably more correct right. than the uh, model. Yeah. And I totally am sympathetic to seeing the shadow line. I think it's really important on this front here. And to answer Pierre's question, why the tree at the back? So you never see that online. Right. <laughs> Not yeah, a solution. I mean, uh, yeah, You'd have to stand in front to see. He was, I think he came before this board. I mean, I don't know, because I was the I was on the board at that time or, or not, but anyway, and that's what happened. Okay. Um, it's it's certainly um, we think that you know it's gonna be a great thing to inhabit it and certainly and definitely an improvement on the street and have this little mutton chip, you know, big There are lots of ways to, additions are always raised, all those interesting things that Paul Byer and you know, other people have spent a lot of time thinking about here, how to differentiate, and how to match, but, or not. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. I, so, I disagree with that. I like the subtle shift. I think it's kind of nice to have this thing sliding in just mm -hmm. a little bit below. And I also think it allows you some leeway in terms of matching the asphalt shingles between yeah. the two roofs. Yeah. So, it doesn't allow the alignment of the windows doesn't allow for it if you make that step it steps down the windows on one side so the existing don't necessarily align with the existing so there's some misalignment there where right. just because of trim and close to how close you are to the fascia that doesn't allow you to align where you would normally want to in my opinion so right. Um, 
So while yeah, it does have some subtlety to it, it doesn't allow some of that alignment that you'll that will catch your eye very quickly if you that's something that you're very symmetrical in your thinking. So, right. Yeah. Um, Six of one. Yeah. yeah right. Well, exactly. Those are the kind of things that we really assess on. You know, kind of notice and, and try to get the best uh, humor the best we can. Okay. Um, so, should I make a motion to approve it or submit it? Second. Second. Eight seconds. Everybody second. Good. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. We'll get you in here. <clears throat> Down four square, thank you. Down four square. Who's here? Oh. Yeah. 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 like I have a couple of photos of and it was not included in the package, but I could yes. come up and show you the Okay. So this is in uh, Stanford, Connecticut, called the High Grove, with uh, 100 units of luxury apartments in the Robert Stern building, believe it or not, in Stanford. So that's it during the daytime. in the application. Um, we've gone and selected a slightly darker yeah, color here, better, which I think is better, a little better than that. Better. And um, Both colors I think that you'll notice it as yeah. architects. Most people will, some won't, but I think this is a better tone. Yeah. Much nicer. Yes. Okay. And that the tone color is 7697. Yeah, I wouldn't. 
limitation? There's no height limitation? Or? We don't have more height limitation. <coughs> to compare to the existing pylon at Chauncey Square in terms of um, it's, it's, you know? it's not as tall. I mean, well, the reason I selected that kind of 19, 20 feet is based on the new supermarket that's going to be on the corner. Um, so we didn't want that like popping way up. Right. So we chose the elevation, but it's comparable to that building on the corner. Is, I'm sure that you know, is, it's tall than 12 feet. It's, it's basically So I understand that there are like two monuments, right? Yes, sir. One is up, one new. And yes, and, and one's, um, one has a stone wall right up against it, yeah. as shown in the approved site plan. The other one is behind the stone wall of the main entry, and I can show you that here. The locations were on the approved site plan. Yeah. I make a motion to approve this as admitted. With the adjusted baton color. Yes, the adjusted baton color. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Ashford Avenue. existing sign there now? No. That's not to remember. And are those doctors going to be part of this? Do you know? There are a whole bunch of doctors in the building? It's just... Um, or this is something new? This is something new. So when he's... I believe uh, the, client, uh, the owner of the Apple Med Urgent Care owns the building himself. Mm -hmm. He's just looking to do the pylon for the urgent care. Not, not, not Nothing else.
mentioned, uh, there is the, the gooseneck light. Correct. Um, there are three here. Which one are you choosing? What size is like? We would choose the smallest one. The seven inch? Yeah, yeah, the smallest one. 8100. Yeah. 8100. is compliant with the received the variance from the zone board it okay. was not compliant with the standard it's just a stark white yes bright white it's, just it's very I mean it's very like in your face in your face coming down the street compared to the to the building itself I mean it looks foreign right it looks like it's not supposed to be there with the building did they consider, I'm, it's hard, I know toning it's hard down. to answer, but did they consider toning it down to have a more grayish finish or something along the lines to look more like it's aligned with the building somehow? I believe the sign is on the building with the, like the ivory, like the beige. Um, would that be okay? Almost white? Much the same color of what's okay. That's yeah. what would have to be done. Yeah. Can I ask how tall are you? Six feet. Okay. So the sign says it's six feet. But it's the guy. You see the guy there. That's yeah. the same difference. No, that's not me. That's, that's not, not you. Him. Okay. Because no. I'm just looking He's at. He's probably you. about. So you're right. Five ten. Five eleven. Six feet. What's my mind? Six feet. Okay. It just seems. Scales off a little bit, but that's okay. okay. All right. Yeah, if you can tone it down. Yeah, if you can tone it down to match the sign of same color yeah, as the exactly. building sign. Yeah, that's that's what we want. Would be great. Okay. All right. So. And then obviously the post would be the same. Yeah. I everything with the. Yeah, just not so it just doesn't jump out right at you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I make a motion to approve this application with two conditions that the uh, lighting. Is the small of the three, the AD100 fixture, the light fixture, and the uh, white will match the existing sign, the off white. Okay. Second. 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 Raymond seconds. All in favor? Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> For, for Lawrence Street, Jot, sign. Objections, but I think that there is an issue of compliance. As long as you comply with the regulations, right, we are happy. Code for Charleston Square maximum uh, maximum sign area should not exceed in area one square foot per linear foot of the storefront.
tend to do would be a, like a two foot by 11 foot to chop, and then the six inch by three foot, three and a half foot for the salad and meat. If you take each one together, it would add up to about a 26 foot square foot. Six square feet, which is right now. If you take it top to bottom, by left to right, it's forty-three square feet. If you take the words individually, the thirty-inch by by basically uh, let's say half let's take a, a, do I get it right? Um, it, it's I'm getting to it as is thirty-one square feet, correct? I I see three and a half feet. If we take the overall two lines. Right? Oh, you're going to 230. Okay. So can, can you split it? It's the same size. 12 and a half feet long, I come up with 43 it's and three quarters square feet. Right. Okay. So if you reduce the width, that means the depth, the, to uh, two foot, you say? Well, if, if we take the word chop and bring it down to two foot, it should scale down to about 11. So you're losing so a, a, foot, a, foot, a foot and a half. Right? No, uh, no, there's uh, six inches only. Yeah, so it's gonna be work. what? That would work. Two foot by eleven. Two foot by eleven to the top would be twenty-two square foot. Right. And then the tag line underneath, that six inch by say four foot would be two square foot. It, it, you know, or even six foot long would be three square foot. So it would be twenty-two and three twenty-five. That would work. That would work. Fine. That would, that would be fine. Which is, it, it, that's not a problem. It, it hasn't been made yet. That would be compliant. That would be compliant. Okay. okay. So, so any, any more comments? As long as it uh, meets code? No. All right. So uh, I will make a motion that we approve. I do have one comment, yes. though. I mean, I'm assuming that this is going to be centered. Well, the girl that helped me actually printed this. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really this. That's what it is. They just boxed out the area to show where okay. the sun is going to go. Okay. So. Okay, so this is the correct one. Yes. Sorry. So I'll make, that, I'll make a motion that we approve this as long as it's compliant within the square footage allowed, as we discussed. Uh, motion, a second. 50 seconds. All in favor? Approve. Thank you. Thank you. We have a an application that didn't wasn't reviewed. Mitch. Hello. It's Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Molmood. Uh, Mitch Koch is here representing uh, Ivan Molmood. He came into the building department with a uh, garage, I believe. Yes. Uh, wanted to get it on the ARB and it found it not to be compliant, so we sent him to the zoning board. He received his variance and then was able to go on to the ARB, but Pat neglected to uh, put him on the street's agenda. It was noticed to the neighbors. So the, uh, were, were the neighbors notified? The neighbors were notified, of course. That we would be in the agenda? No that might be in the agenda? That he might make? Yes. And, uh, there was no uh, contention at the uh, zone board. Okay. I think I remember this application. We, reviewed it. We, we got the packet a while ago, right? I think that must have been where they went. I, I'm a little bit yeah. late to the party. So, um, so I, I, I have no objections. So I can, I, let's say that I'm okay reviewing it. Because okay. That's okay. Yes, I think it actually is on the pad. Arnie and she may have just given it a Hi, so you're welcome to make a presentation. All right, so I'm going to just hold it up. My name is Mitch Koch. I'm from Hastings. I'm actually the architect of this. Ivan is a contractor and fiercely independent and wanted to do everything himself, except tonight. So um, basically, Uh, 
Bob's house, and there's some details at the portico at the front door that I picked up for the garage um, and ran with them a little bit. But you can see that there are, you know, wide eaves and like a slightly trimmed rafter tail. You can see that that's a detail that we're going to maintain um, for some structural reasons. I I modified it a little bit, but basically we have a kind of a little truss work detail that we have in the front and at the mid. In the back, it's actually resting on the rear wall, um, which is a big retaining wall, honestly. Um, the, the roof structure floats a little bit above the top of the, the cement or the concrete um, retaining wall. And it's to be articulated with through bolts, basically. Um, and that's all I've really got to say. You can see that it's deeply burned in because um, the hill is quite steep at that location. But should plant it should be charming, and it would speak to the house. Okay. So was this an existing driveway before? They didn't have any parking. No, but it's been approved by zoning, so no parking. It was for the left side? It was. It, that's on the right side of the property. Property, yeah. Yeah, right. So it's, yeah, if you go up, if you oh. go up South Lawn, it's on the left, left. Uh, close to the, really to the bottom of the street. Right. And the house perches way up above. Um, it's got a great cash. So no, it would, you know, the um, the language of it is to match the house, and we would use some kind of semi-opaque saying on the cedar to match the house. Uh, it's a dark brown, really. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you said it's an open carport, right? Really? Yeah. It's a nice, nice view. Everybody else has one in the neighborhood. At least they have parking. Yeah. No. No, they don't. Two cars off the street. What about I'm good. The, what? So I. What? Who needs to identify the initials of materials? It's got, it's got 30 year architectural shingles. Yeah. And then. Uh, it's all to match the house, and that's the language. So. All right. Okay. So I'll make a motion. We approve us, submit it. That's it. Brendan second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. I'll see him building them when I walk. I'll make yeah, a motion that we continue the minutes for the next hearing because Michael is not here. And, and you're not here. Too. No, no, no. Michael is not here for the view. This today. One. I will have quarter because it's only you on my. Okay, um, so. And then you're not here for the next meeting. I'm not going to talk. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's Columbus Day or whatever that is. Yeah. Something. So I'll. Do I have a second? <laughs> second. <laughs> All in yeah, favor? Three seconds. So I'll make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Go back, go back to the TV now. Second. Yeah, we're going to. Go back to the TV. Adjourn. Eight seconds adjourned. All in favor? Second. Thank you. Thank you.